Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint. Now it's time for our regular introducing feature. We throw the spotlight on up and coming professional SAA artist Louise Bogard, whose lively and loose style is popular throughout the Southwest. What I'm going to show you today is a couple of techniques that I use to paint in a very loose and lively way. Now I'm using a very wide flat brush which is loaded with clean water and I'm going to very quickly cover the entire paper with some nice clean water onto which I will then apply a very diluted wash of raw sienna. Now what I want to do is create a lovely glow at the back of the painting that I'm going to do which is of some seed heads. So as you can see, the paper is absolutely sopping wet. I need it to be that wet to allow the pigment to then to move across the page um, and to give, as I say, a nice glow. Now, I'm now changing from the very wide brush to a round size 10. They hold a lot of fluid and pigment. Now, I'm using my brush on the side. Now, this allows me to cover the area much, much more quickly. So I'm applying the paint very gently and allowing it to actually swim and spread across the paper in a really gentle manner. As I say, what I'm hoping to achieve is a really nice glow as a background to the painting. Now, what I have to do now, which is the worst part in watercolour painting, is to actually be patient and to wait and allow that pigment, as I say, to actually just do its thing and spread across. What I can't do is go straight in with what I want to do next, which is to use some moon glow and start creating some of the very distant uh, seed heads that I want to paint on there. The reason I can't go in is what will happen, in fact what I'll do is I'll show you, is I've got a tiny little area on the side of my paper where I shall put some more very clean water and then go in with the raw sienna. So I've, I've got a very wet surface into which I'm introducing some very wet colour, very wet paint. What I will do is, when this has settled down a little bit more, is go into the moon glow. And as you saw just then, I was using a very diluted pigment. This time, what I want to do is use a much thicker, more pastier paint. However, I don't want this to happen, which is where the paint gets really excited and just explodes across the paper. In itself, is a very pretty effect, but it isn't what I'm after. So as I say, I do have to allow this to settle in just for a few moments. So I'll leave it time to dry. I'm going to now try putting in some of the nice thick moon glow paint. What I hope to do now is to actually create some of the very distant seed heads so that you get this sense that it's a real, I don't know, complete mess, a quite, quite a jungle of seeds. I've moved down to a rigger. Again, I'm using a Kalinsky brush. Uh, the reason, again, is it does hold a nice amount of pigment so I don't have to keep going back to my palette. So I'm going to do a nice long brush mark. What I will do is just literally touch the surface with the tip of the brush. And as you can see, it just immediately spreads out. What I want to do is create some nice tops of this lovely seed head. It's um, like a um, hogweed or a cow parsley is what I'm trying to suggest with the pigment. But this is when I'm allowing the pigment to actually do what it does best. And that's spread out in this lovely soft way. You get this gorgeous, just interesting effect. Picking up a little bit more of the pigment. It's got to, as I say, be quite thick. And I think, okay, where do I want to have another one? Well, I'm going to go right across there. Create another lovely seed head here. Just touch the tip of the brush, leaving a little bit of the pigment on the paper. Now, at this stage, it's okay for it to be quite wet and giving this lovely diffused soft effect. But later on, that isn't at all what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a much more controlled effect. This is where you can be a little bit mad and free with your brush strokes. So you can see I haven't had to go back to my palette to get more pigment. There's still plenty on my brush. I'll do some odd little bits coming off on the side to make it a little bit more interesting. A little bit of grass. don't really know what it is. It's just a nice, interesting effect. And what I can't resist is to flick. Now, it's usually stand back, everybody, because I usually make quite a mess. Use, again, use quite thick, pasty paint. And again, I always use a small brush, a rigger. Because what I do is hold my palm down quite low towards the painting and flick quite firmly, holding the brush at the end, onto the painting. And I usually share it with quite a few people around me and my clothes. Right, now what we need to do is to allow this all to dry completely before I go on to doing anything further. So now I have to be a bit patient. Well, now we can continue because the painting is absolutely dry. And one very good tip, easy way to check that your painting is dry, is to actually use the palm of your hand, not the back, the palm of your hand, and place it onto the painting. If it feels cool 
and a bit cold, then it's not dry. So it needs to feel quite warm to the touch. And that one's all right, we can actually continue. Now for this next stage, what I'm going to do is paint with just water. So I'm using the, the rigger brush, loaded it with clean water, and I'm gonna think about where do I want to place my very nearest seed head. So if I hold my other brush and place it I think, okay, where would I like to place them? I think I'm quite happy with putting it in that sort of direction. So, with the lovely loaded brush of clean water, create a lovely channel of, I say, just water. Branch it out a few times for the little bits at the top. Now, into that clean water, I'm going to drop some very thick moon glow. Now, we used it quite pasty earlier, but this time it needs to be a little bit thicker. So I'm loading my brush with the tip of your brush that is loaded. It's just to touch the side of that really lovely wet channel that you've created. Because this helps to create just a little bit of a 3D effect for the stem of your foreground seed heads. You can see that the paint has actually travelled across, so creating this lovely 3D. And I've hardly done anything except for touch the brush to some really interesting areas on the painting. Now what I'm going to do before I go any further is just clean my brush and then pick up a touch of rich green gold, just a little bit, it's a very strong colour, and introduce a hint in a few places. This acts or does two different things. It helps to introduce another colour and also helping to create that lovely 3D effect within the, the stem. This is where I absolutely love painting in watercolours because of the fascinating, amazing and almost scary things that it tends to do. Let me just bring another line from there. Now in order to create the top of this seed head, what I'm going to do is again paint with clean water, laying my brush on its side. I'm thinking about where do I want the top of that seed head to, to actually be on the paper. Into that I'm going to drop some more of that really strong pigment. Taking some of the water off my brush, picking up some of the nice thick moon glow. And what I'm going to do now is with the tip of my brush is touch some of the dry paper edges and some of the wet areas. The water allows, look at that, that lovely gush. Now that's what really excites me about watercolour painting. It looks to me like I need a little bit more of a design over this side. And then this is really lovely to do. Clean my brush and what I'm going to do is start creating and these lines coming down from the seed head to the stem. So you touch the bottom of the seed head where you've already painted and very, very carefully would encourage that pigment to come down. And they've got a lovely sort of fan shape. There has to be a little bit of flicking, it's essential. This helps to create a really nice windy day with lots of action. But that's how I like to paint using watercolours in a very loose and lively way and have loads of fun. And I do hope you too will have some fun. Fantastic work. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of Louise and her lively approach to art very soon. Well, now as promised, it's time for us to leave the comfort of the studio and take a trip to the fantastic ancient cathedral city of Wells to see how the master paper makers of St Cuthbert's Mill have been producing high quality artist papers ever since the 1700s. Nestled in the foothills of the Mendips in Somerset is St Cuthbert's Paper Mill. Here we've been making fine paper since the 1700s, using skills passed down by generations of paper makers. The exclusive home of Bockingford, Saunders Waterford and Milford watercolour papers, St Cuthbert's Mill's artists' papers are known worldwide for their quality and consistent performance. The mill is located close to the source of the River Axe at the famous Wookiehole Caves, whose waters are permeated through the soft limestone hills above. These pure waters are essential to our papermaking process. The finest clean pulp, either cotton or wood, is added to the lamort and beaten with water and other largely natural raw materials like starch, clay and chalk. This is then pumped into the vat. Our paper machine is a cylinder mould machine built in 1907 it's one of only five in the world making artists' papers and the second widest. The cylinder mould lifts the fibres from the vat to form a sheet. The fibres in this sheet are arranged in a random fashion. This gives the sheet an inherent strength and a stable surface. The mould also adds the watermark and creates two of the feathery deckle edges on the sheet. 
This sheet, which is now a continuous strip, passes through natural woolen felts where the random surface texture is applied and water removed. The sheet now needs to be dried and it passes through a number of steam-filled cylinders. As you can see, the sheet proceeds very slowly through the machine. Once dried, the sheet then passes through the size press. This is a bath where any surface sizing, like gelatin, in the case of Saunders Waterford, is added. The whole process is constantly monitored by the paper makers to ensure the machine is running smoothly, producing consistent paper. The sheet then passes through some more cylinders for a final drying. If the paper is going to be hot pressed, it passes through a number of smooth heavy steel rolls called calendars to add the smooth surface. The sheet is now made and rolled up to form a reel of paper. The paper is constantly checked for dirt and faults. Our quality control department at St Cuthbert's Mill examines every reel of paper. Up to 30 tests are carried out to ensure it meets our strict standards. These range from surface and colour matching, painting the sheet, to testing the sheet strength. The surface is matched by eye to a surface standard and compared to previous makings. The sheet is painted with a special mixture of pigments developed to highlight any faults on the sheet. Surface sizing is tested using pen and ink to determine and quantify any spread. Once it's passed quality control, the reel proceeds to the saw. Here, every sheet, in the case of four decal edge paper, is hand torn and again inspected. This process is a time-honoured tradition and it shows the amount of care and attention that St Cuthbert's Mill puts into its paper. On some papers, an embossed stamp is added to the corner of the sheet, another mark of the authenticity of the paper. As our paper is so precious, it's carefully packed to ensure it arrives in the same condition as when it leaves St Cuthbert's Mill. You can be guaranteed that every sheet you buy will give you excellent, consistent results, whatever your preferred medium. St Cuthbert's Mill, keeping traditional paper making alive in Britain today. St Cuthbert's Mill, keeping traditional paper making alive in Britain today. True professionals who take great pride in producing their finest quality paper. Time for a quick break now, folks, and join us after the break in part four as Marion Dutton completes their underpainting project. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>